the expansion link trunnions are going to be an interesting little build. My main concern being rigidity and how do I maintain it when the sides of this are only 1.5mm thick and the base is only a little bit thicker at 2.4mm. But let's crack on. I start off with this lump of mild steel from my scrap box. It's a bit oversized so I machine it down to what I'm after. 9.52mm thick and 11.1mm across the width. And I clean up both the ends. Once I've got it to size I apply some blue and mark out the outline for both trunnions. Next I use a pilot drill and a drill to remove a big chunk of the unwanted material in the middle. First I use a hacksaw to join the two holes in each side and then get on to some hard work with the files. After about an hour of this I have a change of heart and decide to move back onto the milling machine. Before I carry on with removing all that material in the centre section, I centre drill and drill the hole for the shaft. After cutting off one of the two trunnions from the stock, I clamp it back in the machine vise ready for milling. To open up the central section, I use a sharp slot drill and lots of shallow cuts. I'm doing round about 0.2mm against each side and likewise when I come to the bottom. I really can't stress how careful I was with taking these cuts, but so far so good. To foul the radius on the end here, I've turned a button. This is 8.1mm across and 9.52mm diameter. And as you can see, I hold it in place with a pin located where the shaft will go. And as I've hardened the button, I won't undercut the part. The trunnions will initially be fixed to the expansion links with a pair of ABA bolts and then at some point that particular joint will need to be soldered. So I drill a pair of ABA clearance holes in the base of the trunnion. Don's design has these spaced at quarter of an inch. That puts them very close to the edge so I bring them in a bit closer at 5.6mm apart. I take this as a good opportunity to drill and tap the corresponding holes in the expansion links. And as you can see I do them as a pair to ensure that the trunnions will be located in the same position on each respective link. Tapping such small holes is always a nerve-wracking exercise, so I always use a spring tap guide, which is just out of view in the top of the picture here. I have put a slight countersink in both of the holes, and I do use countersunk screws to fix the trunnion to the expansion link. However, as I said earlier, this joint will need to be soldered, so I will be filing these screws back at some point in the future. For the shaft I solder a short length of 316 bar into the trunnion. I'm actually looking for 4.5mm diameter on the shaft but I'll come back to that in a minute. With the shaft soldered in place I can now bring it down to the required diameter. This setup is a little bit precarious so I'm taking really shallow cuts.
With one side done, I swap the part around and do the other side. This approach gives me two advantages. Firstly, it clears up my somewhat sloppy soldering. And secondly, it ensures that the shaft is running true. Next, I remove the bit of shaft that is not required. And then carefully clean up the insides with a file. As with a few of the other parts associated with the valve gear, I'm not going to solder this joint until I'm comfortable that everything's working. In fact, I'm minded not to solder it at all. I might just load up these screws with Loctite and then file them back. I'll think a bit more on that one. Thanks for watching.